Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into this video weather presentation. We want to highlight a serious situation with strong Santa Ana winds that have developed and expected to continue through Saturday. This has resulted in high fire danger. It'll be around all the way through at least Saturday. The impact from this event could be high. This video presentation will discuss some of the details. Santa Ana winds, well, they're not unusual for Southern California, and in fact, in December, they're not unusual either. They typically peak out sometime in December and January, as you see on this graphic here. Now, what's unusual this time of the year? Well, we are looking at one of the driest starts to the wet season, or the fall of 2017. Most locations in Southern California, mountains and valleys, have received little or no precipitation. In addition, which is a stress to vegetation and adding to the very dry conditions, our temperatures have been running much above normal this fall as shown here. What is a Santa Ana wind event? Well, basically it's high pressure. And in this case, we have a very strong high pressure that instead of moving along across the Rockies and into the plains as they usually do, it's remaining anchored or it's stuck over northern Nevada and northern Utah. The difference between high and low pressure, the wind blows from high to low, that creates the wind. However, in our region, what's unique is that wind has to travel through and over mountains. It can't go down to our region without encountering those mountains. And that forces the wind to be enhanced through the mountain passes and also it forces the wind to go up and over like a mountain wave action that can really cause damaging winds. So far, if you follow on weather.gov San Diego, you can see the maximum wind gusts. And we've seen up to 80 miles per hour. That occurred in the Santa Ana Mountains of Orange County. Other areas in the Cajon Pass were up around 60 miles per hour, including an area along Highway 60 as you see here over in the San Gregorio Pass. Many locations have already reached 30 to 45 miles per hour from Riverside down to Anaheim and also areas now in San Diego County. We expect these values to go up as we go through the week, especially on Thursday. We've also seen fires begin in these extreme conditions as shown here on the satellite. At least two significant fires with at least a half dozen smaller fires already underway. Here is a satellite image that shows the detail of those fires that are occurring in Ventura and LA County. As I speak, a few wildfires are erupting in the Cajon Pass in San Bernardino County. This image is taken from a satellite and you can see the different colors contained within that massive smoke plume as it moves east to west within those Santa Ana winds. The clouds you see along the Mexico border, well, those are just high clouds which are slowly moving away as a weak disturbance passes through. Here's the disturbance I'm talking about. This disturbance is bringing down dry, sinking air and really one of the biggest culprits to how critical our fire weather conditions are. The air outside is very dry. We measure it as the dew point temperature Almost every location, coast or mountain, are looking at dew point temperatures around zero Fahrenheit. That's very dry. You can see the subtropical moisture being pushed away to the south in the form of those high clouds. How unusual is this high pressure system that we're talking about? Well, as it builds over our region on Wednesday and Thursday, this map here shows that it's very unusual. In fact, for a high pressure that strong to sit over eastern Oregon and up in Idaho, uh, it's outside the range of climate. Now, for the high pressure to extend over Nevada and Utah, which it normally does, still we're looking at a return interval here of up to 10 years, so very rare. Now, it really depends location, location, where you are in Santa Ana wind events. If you're wondering why you're not having strong wind at your house, consider yourself lucky. Now, it all depends on your exposure and how that air can get through and over the mountains or the topography, we call it. 
We see up in LA and Ventura County, those areas can be affected by wind directions coming out of the north and even the northeast. Now across the Inland Empire, those areas really like to favor that northeast wind direction. And they've been getting that uh, over the past 24 hours. And you can see the wind often extends downstream all the way uh, past the I-5 corridor. You can see in San Diego County, there's other areas that are prone, the I-8 corridor, and then it typically can extend westward, reaching uh, often in the stronger events, the I-15 corridor. So Santa Ana wind events really depend where you are and where the direction of the wind is coming from. Typically what happens is the wind starts from a northerly direction and then it works its way to the east. That's why the wind typically lasts the longest, like we'll see in San Diego County, through Saturday. Here is a high resolution depiction of the expected wind. Now this is the wind for Thursday, which we think will be the strongest day, especially in Riverside and San Diego County. We can see wind speeds in our mountain foothill slopes between two and 4,000 feet elevation where the winds are getting up to 70 miles per hour and possibly even winds exceeding 90 miles an hour in isolated locations. Some of that wind, as you can see on the image to the right, is expected to translate all the way down into the coastal and valley areas. Take a look at the map here and you can see the scale. This does not include wind gust. These are just sustain average winds. Now across our region here is some uh, general reference of peak wind gusts and you can see on Thursday that a large area west of Julian and Mount Laguna and Cuyamaca Lake is expected to be the target zone and a lot of that wind spreading all the way to Ramona and to Escondido and then eventually even some strong wind gusts when we get into Carlsbad and Encinitas. You can see also Orange County, who's already seen wind gusts of 40 miles per hour. We'll see more of that on Thursday. And then the Inland Empire really depends because of the complex terrain where you are. Most of our deserts are spared unless you're right along the foothills. Take a look at this map closely. And keep in mind that wind gusts and these type of events as the waves of air break over the mountains, as you can envision it on the different slopes here, can be 10 to 30 miles per hour stronger. We are entering in a critical condition for fire weather. It began really overnight and today, but we see on Thursday we're getting into uncharted territory. This is a measure of the Santa Ana wind, which includes the fuel conditions, the humidity or lack of, and of course the wind. But most importantly, it also includes historical fire weather information. And we can see it's the highest level here that we do expect if there are ignitions, extreme fire behavior. Here's a summary. This is probably the strongest Santa Ana wind event since 2014. If you recall, late April and also in May, the event in May produced a lot of fires, and that was because the fuel conditions were more like it was September. Prolonged duration, that's key, all the way through Saturday. The peak is on Thursday. Extreme fire danger all through this period because of the humidity, the gusty winds, and the dry vegetation. We, uh, we possibly could see wind damage to trees and homes, wind gusts of 30 to 50 for coastal and valleys. That's important. Uh, this is not just a mountain event. Also, wind gusts of 50 to 90 in the mountain passes and adjacent foothills. This should affect and will continue to affect high-profile vehicles. We've already seen a lot of accidents in the Inland Empire because of the strong winds and crosswinds. And loose objects can really become projectiles in this type of scenario. So again, uh, the worst of the conditions are expected to be on Thursday, but we're going to see periods of Santa Ana winds relentlessly impacting our area now through Saturday. Please tune in to weather.gov for the latest information, and you can also check us out on social media for some later details. Thanks for tuning in.